Hello everybody, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. This is part 7 of my uh, series, The Bible Says. I hope you watched the series from the beginning, um, but we covered in the last video the fact that when we get born again, by putting our faith in Jesus, that it begins a, a lifelong struggle between the old man and the new man. Paul goes um, into uh, detail uh, accounting his own personal struggle with this. Um, but the, the goal, of course, is to, is to uh, grow and mature into a mature, productive Christian. And not everybody does. But there are things that you can do that should um, promote this kind of growth. So let's look at what you can do. Um, let, let me compare it for a moment to uh, the, uh, the, the physical birth. Um, I was born physically November 19th, 1950. And from that moment, um, if I was going to have a successful life, there, there were things that uh, I should be doing to assure that uh, I would succeed in life. Uh, of course, I, I need to have good food and good nutrition. I need to exercise my body. I will certainly would need a, a good education. Uh, and then off into my career or work a job to do. Um, that's uh, pretty much what uh, most of us are faced with uh, as, as we go through this life. Uh, these same uh, these same things can be said about our spiritual birth and then our spiritual journey or, or hopefully our spiritual growth. Um, but Food, exercise, education, and a job. Let me translate that to uh, prayer, uh, Bible study, uh, fellowship, uh, and uh, ministry work. But let me take them one at a time. Uh, Matthew 6, 7 says, But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Um, also in Romans 12, 12, it says, Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Uh, Colossians 4, 2 says, Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. All right, let's. When when we're warned uh, by Jesus Himself in Matthew um, six seven about these vain repetitions, um, it, it was common then, and it's common today uh, in some religions. Particularly, one that is most obvious is Roman. Catholicism, where people will memorize a prayer or memorize several prayers and then repeat them over and over and over again. It becomes like a mindless, robotic kind of repetition. Jesus here says it's vain repetitions. Um, that's not a good idea. If you really want to pray to God, what is prayer anyway? It's a conversation with God. So let me compare it to uh, my wife for a moment. What if my conversations with, with my wife were went like this? I wrote out a little paragraph or two and then memorized it. And every time I saw my wife throughout the day, I would repeat this memorized paragraph. 
Uh, well, I imagine after she heard me say it maybe two times or three times, she realized what what is what is going on here? You, you're not talking like a normal person. You you just re you repeating the same thing over and over again, and that would be obvious to anybody that that, that is not a conversation. Uh, conversation is between two people and you should be taking turns talking and listening. So these memorized prayers as they do in Roman Catholicism uh, have no value and Jesus specifically uh, he describes it and warns against it. Um, so we should be speaking from our heart just in any conversation would you have like you have with your friend or family member a loved one the conversations you have just imagine that you're talking to God in the same way and when you uh, when you have these conversations are you interested in what the other party has to say or are you just narcissistic and just want to do all the talking and it's all about you and what you're thinking? Or will you stop for a moment and consider, well, what does the other person have to say? Well, what does God have to say to me? So that's really the proper, uh, I think, understanding and mindset uh, approach to our prayer. Uh, but when, uh, when we do pray, um, Romans Paul, uh, 12.2, Paul tells us this should be a continuing instant in prayer. The way I take that is that, and I, I, I do this, this is a, my routine. Uh, when I wake up in the morning, before I get out of bed, I begin praying. Um, and then life interrupts the prayer. I, there are things I have to do, tasks that must be performed, and it requires my focus and concentration. But when the task is over, according to this verse here, I should continue instantly in the prayer that I began when I woke up. Continue. The default should automatically be go right back into prayer as soon as your mind is freed up from you know the, the work that needs to, needs to be done. Um, and that's the way your day should go. Um, and it says in Colossians 4, to devote yourselves to prayer. I think that if you're waking up praying and praying throughout the day and, 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 and praying as you go to sleep, then you pretty much have devoted yourself to prayer. And it says, be watchful and thankful. Um, my prayers primarily consist of two points, two goals, two, uh, two things I'm focusing on and, and wanting to uh, accomplish. One is uh, uh, say to the Lord, help me. Help me with something. I have a need, Lord. The Bible tells us to bring our troubles to the Lord and and, and uh, ask for his, his help. So with all your needs, ask the Lord to help you. That's a, called a prayer of supplication. And then there's prayers of intercession where we ask the Lord to help, not us, but other people. We're praying on their behalf, asking Jesus to, to, to help them. Um, and then there's also the, the prayers of thanksgiving and praise. Praise and thanksgiving are, go hand in, in hand. Uh, as we talk to, to Jesus, um, all, all praise and glory, every, all credit go, has to go to Jesus and it should be continually uh, recognized. We should always give recognition to Jesus for who he is. He created us. Don't, don't forget that. That's not a minor point. You only exist because, because Jesus brought creation into existence. 
So let's praise him for who he is. He is eternal God Almighty, the creator of all things. And he loves us so much that uh, in, in, even uh, he demonstrated his love to us even while we're yet sinners. Christ died for us. So let's always acknowledge in our prayers this praise that, that uh, Jesus deserves. And at the same time, thanks for everything he's done for us. So we continually ask him to help us and we're continually praising and thanking him. That's really a, 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 the way I see prayer in a Christian's life. And if you do this, uh, your relationship is going to change. It's just like with my wife again. My relationship wouldn't be very good if I just memorized a statement and said the same thing over and over again. We wouldn't have any relationship at all. She'd probably eventually leave me thinking I'd lost my mind. And uh, But if we have true conversations, taking turns, talking and listening with, with sincere concern for each other's needs, <clears throat> then that, those kinds of conversations build a relationship. If you really want to have a relationship with Jesus, then prayer is the way to accomplish that. The next we have the study the Bible. Uh, there's a principle called sola scriptura. This is where we get the truth. Everything else, science, philosophy, uh, theologians, uh, extra biblical writings, all these things may be helpful, but they must all be tested against this. This is the final authority for truth and all our theological conclusions. So we need to read it and study it. Um, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we, we studied the Bible. We learn about God, we learn about his plans, and we learn about the future because this Bible is full of prophecies and many of the prophecies have been fulfilled and many of them are yet to be fulfilled so we can read the Bible and, and know what it is to come. Um, give you another example um, to illustrate this Bible study. Uh, the Bible has been called the love letters from God. In fact, much of the Bible are letters. They're called epistles. Um, what if someone told you, someone you loved very much, say someone you love more than anyone else, your wife, your child, whoever that is, and they told you that they were going to have to go on a trip and they'd be gone for a long time but they promised to return. But then you, you in every week you, you got in the mail a letter from them, an old fashioned letter with a stamp on it, an envelope and a message inside. And uh, it was, they were very faithful. They sent you the letters every week. And then after a long, long time, your loved one returned and you embrace and as he's hugging you or they're hugging you and looking over your shoulder, they see a pile of letters that were never opened. How would your loved one feel if, if they realized that the letters they sent to you, the time and effort they put in to write those letters, to continue telling you, you know, uh, what was going on in their lives, or, you know, what, what they're, what they, uh, how much they missed you, how much they loved you, all the things that were in those letters. You never could be bothered to take the time and open the letters and read them. Um, I don't think that they would be very happy that you were, could, were not even, didn't even care enough to read the letters. And that, that's why um, so many people, uh, they have a Bible in their home. And the, the, the Bible sits on the bookshelf 
It's like a trophy. It's just gathering dust. But by reading the Bible, that's where we'll come to real understanding about God and his plan for us. 2 Timothy 3.15 says, And how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ. So in the scriptures, we learn about salvation. We learn about who God is. We, we learn about our need for him to be our savior. We learn about how we accomplish this salvation for us and how we receive it and so much more. 1 Peter 3.15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So we're told to study and be prepared to give answers. The only way you're going to do, get these answers is by studying the Bible. Now, the next thing that you can do in order to um, grow and mature into a productive Christian is fellowship with other believers. Uh, look at Romans 12.10. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. So you have two kinds of people. You have Christians, all the people who have come to realize who Jesus is and what he's done for them and, and the gift and the guarantee of eternal life uh, and, and have received that. Uh, and then you have the people who have uh, either not yet come to that belief or have rejected it entirely. So you have the believers and the unbelievers. And this is telling us we should be preferring the company of a believer. Uh, we're told to not neglect, congregating, coming together, spending time together. Um, if you don't have a way of means of doing that, then you can do it on the internet. Every Sunday, 2 p.m. Pacific time, we have the Church of the Eternally Secure and hundreds of people who uh, have not found a good local congregation to participate with. They, they, they have found this as a solution for them. Um, internet, uh, Church on the Internet, the Church of the Eternally Secure. So I invite you to join us every Sunday. But we need to have fellowship with each other. Uh, we need to, which, uh, fellowship is similar to friendship, except fellowship can only take place between believers. So a person must be a believer in order to have fellowship with them. I can have friendship with non-believers, and that does give us opportunities then to hopefully uh, draw them to Christ so that they can also become a believer. Um, but by, uh, by coming together, particularly in small groups, we get to know each other and we can be there for each other, learning from each other and coming to the rescue sometimes when someone, when a, a, a fellow believer or what the Bible calls a saint uh, uh, has a need. And then finally is a ministry. Uh, okay, now that you've You've fed your body with and, and with the Bible, and you've exercised it with prayer, and you've educated it with the Bible. Uh, now it's time to get to work. Okay, and you need a job and, and a career. And the, the Bible says that uh, um, we're, we're all supposed to be ministers. A minister means a servant. The problem is. Most Christians don't know that they're supposed to be a minister. They think that's just for the ecclesia or the or the uh, the, uh, uh, the clergy. <laughs> but every Christian is called into ministry, into service. Uh, so that's the first thing you need to recognize and acknowledge, and and apply to your life. Okay, you're a minister. Now the question is. 
How well will you do uh, with your ministry? How well will you do with your job, your, your career and life? Oh, now we're talking about your, your job as a minister. Um, it, 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 it takes work. We work at our ministries. That's where our works play out. And that's where our works have value. So if you're not working in, in your ministry, you need to first accept the fact that you, you are called into ministry. Secondly, you need to determine what is your calling exactly, because Paul says the body has many parts, uh, hands, feet, eyes, mouth. And, and so this is a picture of the fact that we're all, we all have different roles to play in the church, in our ministries. If we all did the same thing, then the other needs wouldn't be met. So maybe you're a mouth, maybe your hands or feet, uh, maybe you're a heart and you're the one that's gonna be compassionate and showing compassion. And, and, uh, uh, you need to figure it out. And with prayer, uh, you'll get the answer. Okay, this is part nine. The conclusion to this series will be part 10. And in part 10, I'm going to be talking about the judgment uh, and eternity. So thank you for watching. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.